some special guests. You had a flute player and a Peruvian drummer. Yeah. And did you say the Peruvian drummer uh, played a track with Elvis? Was he that? played with Elvis live in oh. Vegas, I think, in like seventy four or something like that. That's you know? bonkers. So how did you how did you find these people? You know, you mentioned the flute players from you know your way, and is it? Well, uh, Björn Jason Lind, the, the flute player, is a legend in Sweden and uh, one of those guys, like, everybody knows who he is in Sweden. But I had this idea for this riff that I wanted a flute type of solo or something, like just a flute noise, basically. And I had a few players in mind and one of, one of them was Björn Jason Lind and uh, also Ian Anderson from Jethro Tull, which I emailed but I've never heard back from him. And uh, the guy from Focus. And but I'm really happy that we got Björn Jason Lind because that, that really connects with the title. Besides, he had been recording his albums in that same studio. Oh, so it all so, worked out. You know, he's been there since like 69, basically. We had to beg him a few times. Yeah, he said no for, for really? a while. And then um, Alex Acuni played the, the percussion part because they're on the same track. And uh, I think we texted Björn back, Alex Acuni is playing on the track. And he's like, yeah, I'm coming down. I'm there. Yeah. Oh, wicked. Oh, that's so cool. It's such a, a weird, eclectic sort of mix. Like, I'd never think that I'd be sat at a listening session with, you know, sort of a metal band talking about a flute player and a Peruvian drummer. It just, you know, seems like well, a I don't think it's, it's, it's super original or anything like that. It just fit, you know. Like, back in the day, like, with Yatro Tal and stuff, they had that, those type of heavy riffs with the flutes and everything. Yeah, yeah. So it's not like super rich, it's just that we've never done it before. So are you tipping your hat at people like sort of Jess Rotel, yeah, of you course. know, harking back to the day? That's the stuff I listen to. Yeah. And it's the stuff that has uh, longevity that, you know, metal records, especially 90s and, and from the 2000s, you know, hasn't, doesn't really have, at least not for me. Yeah. While those albums, you know, like I still listen to them and it sounds good as ever. You can, you can hear it, you can definitely hear it coming through the album. Oh. So the title Heritage, you mentioned, uh, you know, using someone from where you're from and it's, it's all to do with sort of heritage. Is that the general idea behind the title? Or? Musical heritage yeah. is what it is, basically. You know, like it. Going back to the stuff that shaped us in Sweden, like uh, musically, like Swedish folk music. Yeah. And also the stuff that we grew up listening to, the, the early, late 70s, or the 70s, early 80s metal, if you say, hard rock type of music and the prog rock. Basically, all the influences for this album are taken from music from the past, Wicked. you could say. But we don't want it to be like a retro record. We want it to be something fairly new yeah. sounding, but just uh, kind of... A modern take on the stuff you love. Basically, yeah. Wicked. Um, I'll just get you a different angle. Uh, so you played Sonosphere this weekend. How was that? Quite amazing, I think. Yeah. Uh, we had a big crowd and... Luckily enough, the rain started dripping right when we stopped. We um, invoked the rain. Yes. We like Usually to say that you made the clouds cry. Happens when we play the last course. Yeah. But you enjoyed it. You th I mean, the crowd seemed totally into it. it. Seemed to really, really vibe off it. Yeah, I showed my ass to them. Yeah. It was pretty, 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 pretty. Pretty, pretty. <laughs> no, it was nice. I like, you know, I like playing in front of big crowds like that. It's just surreal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and on the contrary to what people might think, I get less nervous yeah. when there's big crowds like that. Because just just because it feels unreal. Yeah. If you know what I mean. But I really enjoyed it. You know, I think we played well. Uh, the crowd seemed to like it. You know. Yeah, it was cool. It was a bit too short. Yeah, because it was. Fifteen minutes. We yeah, got. it it did seem to just sort of fly by, especially when your tracks. I mean, is that what about three tracks for you to five. play? Fifty. Yeah, five. Because you guys have got mega long tracks, so it's not like we're an, an ordinary band to sort of play nine to ten songs. You guys have just got the five. Yeah. How did you pick? How did you decide which five tracks to play? Well, we have a repertoire that we've been playing throughout these summer festivals that we've done so far. And now we had to cut, I think, three or four songs from that set list. Yeah. Uh, because we didn't have time, you know. So basically we just picked songs that we think we play well and also that we think that people like to hear, you know, some favourites or whatever. Cool. I heard one of the guys that organised the photo passes saying um, he was talking to all the photographers and he said, right now we've got a bit of a different setup for Opeth because ordinarily it's three tracks, the first three tracks and then you're off. He said for Opeth, 
I'm going to time you and you can have half an hour because I'm guessing three tracks is going to be their entire set, yeah, which yeah. I thought was quite amusing, them saying that. Um, nice. What? Okay, this is just a bit of a silly question. Um, if you could create your own super group, and it doesn't have to be yourselves, I mean, you can play in the band, if you could play with, you know, musicians, what, who would you have? People that are still alive or...? Anything. Anyone dead, alive. Well, there's been a couple of supergroups already. Like Rainbow, around 1976, was pretty much a supergroup. And would that be your dream super supergroup? Well, I mean, they never sounded better before or since the Rising Record, I think. Yeah. But, um, I mean, there's so many good, great music. Like Richard Blackmore, certainly, it would have to be included, I think. Yeah. Richard Blackmore. And, I mean, if you go for the drummer, you know, you could go with the, like, the fusion guys like Billy Cobham or, or uh, you know, one of those guys. But, okay, Simon Phillips from 1977. Cool. With Blackmore. Cool. Uh, on bass, you can, you can put Jacob Astorius in there because it'd probably be too much. It was a good bass player. I like both Geezer Butler. Oh, Geezer Butler. Yeah. So we, we got Geezer Butler. Are you with us on uh, 